Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. Today's module will discuss SnapLage alternatives. Let's quickly review our learning objectives. First, we should be able to differentiate between SnapLage and other high-moisture corn and similar feeds. Second, describe the nutritional aspects of SnapLage. And finally, understand and explain important harvesting and feeding characteristics of the SnapLage itself. Certainly, the interest in snappage is increasing because of the ability to rapidly harvest with our new big choppers that have kernel processing. So we can take uh, four, six, ten rolls of corn at one time. Because of the kernel processor, we can process it in the field. So the grain actually is ready to feed or certainly to ensile at that point. We can store this product in bags, bunkers, pilos, or silos at this stage of the game. So it gives us a lot of flexibility depending on herd size and uh, feeding characteristics on the farm. And another important aspect is earlier harvest. Less dropping of the ear, getting the crop off earlier, allowing for the planting of a cereal grain, applying manure, or certainly before cold weather sets in and allows us some flexibility in terms for the next growing season. This slide comes from the University of Wisconsin showing the, the magic, if you will. Uh, there you can see a, a large field processor that can take uh, a pier six rows at a time very quickly, uh, blowing this into trucks and transporting it, in, in this case, to a bagger uh, in the lower left-hand corner. And, of course, we can see that feed going into the, the feeder at this point. Notice this is a fairly coarse type product at this stage of the game. Probably would like to see it more finely processed as it goes into the bag. So let's define snappage as a feed ingredient. It consists primarily of the ear, which includes, of course, the cob and the grain, husk, and parts of the plant itself. Hybrids will vary depending on how much husk you get and how much of the plant parts you also get, and also may depend on the moisture content and certainly the time of the day in terms of dew or rain or factors like that. As you'll see a bit later, it contains somewhere around 25% NDF and the range of 50 to 60% starch. Yes, it's quite variable, and you need to be aware of that building feeding programs. Farmers are excited about this because I increased the yield per acre by 15 to 25% more dry matter per acre or per hectare. Uh, the energy value of, of this product is about 80 to 90% of shell corn, again, depending on how much trash is a term we use, which refers to the husk and plant parts. And ideally, we like to harvest it on the wet side. There is some controversy on this. We want to be around 40 to 45% moisture, usually after the black layer. So you can see this crop's going to come in very quickly after chopping corn silage. And of course, it's appealing for farmers who own kernel processing units because another use for that equipment. We think it's a no-brainer to inoculate, and we'd like to look at one of the albuquinari inoculants that are on the marketplace here because the dynamics of, in terms of stabilizing this very high starch product when it can be challenged with such things as yeasts and molds. Next, we'll take a look at the nutrient composition of various high moisture corn products. On this PowerPoint, you'll see three of them, high moisture shell corn, high moisture ear corn, high moisture snaplage. They are different. Be well aware, some people call earlage snaplage. Be careful because other people refer to ear as earlage as high moisture ear corn. Notice the moisture content. It gets wetter as we go along because the cob will be better, wetter, and has other parts of the plant that may contribute that. So we want it to be wetter as we go into the snaplage type product. Look at the starch variation. You can see it varies quite a bit, uh, depending especially between the high moisture ear corn and snappage, depending on how much trash, husk, and other plant parts we get. The good news is what? The NDF tracks that very nicely. So you can track both ADF and NDF to track how much trash you're getting. And you can see in some cases, some of the snappage may look as good as high moisture ear corn. The protein content doesn't vary very much, stays fairly stable. The University of Wisconsin at Madison has done a study with the Snaplage product. One of the first studies done, there was Snaplage work done back in the 1970s. A different kind of product, a different kind of technology. So I think we have to look at the newer data. So you can see here, again, as we look at the dry matters, uh, again, the Snaplage you can see is, is, is wetter than the high moisture shell corn. And you can see starch content, uh, very typical. This is a very good Snaplage, by the way. Notice it's over 60% starch. The protein, the pH, again, good. Good fermentation on both of these products. Ammonia. Notice this in red. This is the new work coming out of Wisconsin. 
Uh, the higher the ammonia content and these high moisture corn and corn silages, the more availability of the starch. So you can see because of the high ammonia content, which means that starch is being released out of its complex structure, it's going to be much more biologically fermentable in the rumen at this stage of the game. Again, nice fermentation profile. In fact, the snaplage probably has an advantage over the high moisture shell corn in terms of having a little higher lactic acid, which is the pickling effect. The acetic acid, of course, is what retards the yeast and the molding from occurring in the feedstuffs. The Wisconsin group then took and actually broke out the corn. Uh, and so in, you look at the mean particle size, this is in microns, the high moisture shell corn was about 1,300 microns. You can see plus or minus. The snaplage, you can see, uh, if we look at the complete product, is quite a bit coarser. Notice it's about four or 500 microns coarser. However, they sat down and pulled that apart and looked at just the grain portion. And using a 4.75 millimeter screen, you can see, again, mean particle size right around 1,400. So very similar particle sizes. Now, that's important because you can see the dynamics of the starch is different. And the dry corn is exactly where we want it, somewhere around 800 to 900 micron in their feed study. They looked at three experiments. They had high moisture shell corn, they had the snaplage, and then they had about a two-third snaplage, one-third dry corn uh, as a third experimental unit. So you can see, again, a very good dry matter intakes on these. Uh, there was some differences. You can see that the highest moisture shell corn was a higher dry matter intake, statistically significant, no difference in terms of milk production, and really uh, a slight advantage uh, with because of lower dry matter intakes on feed efficiency. This is milk per unit dry matter intake or feed efficiency. Some advantage there, highly significant as well. Interesting, they looked also look obviously at components. You can see milk fat dropped statistically significant, even with these smaller number of cows. The snaplage has a lower butter fat test. However, we went back and, we, and added some dry corn uh, along with the snaplage. We got the butter fat test to come back. No difference in milk protein at this stage of the game. And you can see a difference in milk urea nitrogen, the MUNs. And we know that snaplage would be more highly fermentable. That should capture the nitrogen unless for something's going on in the rumen. And perhaps this MUN reflects a bit of abnormal rumen environment or fermentation going on significant at uh, highly significant. We look at the milk fat content by week, and again, you can see uh, most of these cows are starting out pretty much at a similar milk fat. Uh, the high moisture shell corn cows actually went up in butter fat as the trial continued, whereas the snaplage and dry corn maintained pretty close around a 3-5 test, a little bit stronger than that. The snaplage cows went down in week 6, recovered in a somewhat in week 8. And so that shows some of the dynamics going on here. Uh, they really took a hit. You can see they dropped from uh, week four, where they were uh, right on line with around a 3.55, almost a 3.6 test, dropping down to 3.2, and then saw some recovery coming back here as well. Again, if we look at the ammonia content, as we mentioned earlier, the high moisture corn quite stable, looking and weakened storage from uh, week uh, one to four compared to the covariate control. Week five to eight didn't change very much. Snappage continues to be, if you want to use the word, more soluble, or more fermentable, or as a farmer would say, she's a hotter feed. And I think we have to be aware of that. We build our feeding programs looking at the total ration. One of the questions might be on pricing. The way we looked at for an Indiana dairy farmer who was selling this this last year, looked at uh, recurring him to uh, have a number of tests. So we had to get a feel of what the snaplage is. As you saw earlier, it can be quite variable. So we wanted to conduct a several tests to be sure we know what we have in terms of dry matter. Of course, that's important because we don't want to buy water and nutrient content. And the two numbers I really want to see is the percent starch and the percent NDF. Now, these should uh, basically work against each other. As starch goes up, NDF goes down. But certainly, we want to know how good the snaplage is. Then to back into a price, you can simply take the dry matter times the percent starch and then base that on the current price of dry corn equivalent. And so you can price the starch based on corn equivalent. Then you can take the fiber, which would be the rest of the dry matter, or which is non-starch content, and either use two thumb rules. One thumb rule is to price that at 60% the value of corn grain on a dry matter basis. And, of course, all these calculations on dry matter base, and then you can work it back to an as-fed basis when you're actually selling the product, or value of grass forage. In other words, this fiber, this NDF we have, is really fairly good fiber. The cob is more digestible. 
digestible at this stage of maturity at this point. The husk is a fairly good quality forage. If you watch beef cattle gleaning fields, they quickly find the grain, they quickly find the husks because they know that's the good stuff, as we'd say, the M&Ms and trail mix. So obviously this is the way you can do that. Uh, the Pioneer uh, group also has a spreadsheet that you can go to their website and you can actually plug in your, your forage test or should say your feed test results and put it in and they will calculate a value. So there's a couple of different ways of actually doing it. But certainly it can be a pretty valuable feed because uh, the, the fiber is pretty digestible. So what's our take-home messages? Well, certainly we must know that processing the snaplage is going to be important. Uh, we don't want to get it real stringy. Hopefully, I want to have it a very uh, very precise chop if I can going through our kernel processors, and moisture content is critical. The drier the product, of course, the less fermentable it's going to be, but also more difficult to pack, ferment, and ensure a good fermentation in the bag, bunker, or silo. So that's important. Uh, the wetter the corn, we do change the starch fermentation rate. So we know that's going on. I think it enhances, however, the stability of the feedstuff. Finally, we may need to add some additional starch to the dye with snaplage. First of all, remember, we're not putting in corn at 70 plus percent starch. The product could be as low as 50 percent starch. So we may be low on starch, and I got to get that number back up. And for many of us, we're tar targeting 23 to 24 to 26 percent starch in the total ration dry matter. Second of all, based on the Wisconsin data, we may want a slower starch source to make it more rumen friendly to improve the fermentation rates and balance in the rumen as well. Well, that completes our modules on Snaplage. Have a great day.